At 4.40 a.m. on October 03, 2025, a significant event in modern naval conflict unfolded over the dark waters of Tamriuk Bay in the Sea of Azov. A Ukrainian-developed drone engaged a sophisticated Russian warship in a precisely executed operation. This incident would highlight a stark imbalance in military technology and tactics, drawing the attention of defense analysts worldwide. The target was a Russian Bayan M-Class Corvette, a 243-foot vessel built for power projection. The main danger it posed to Ukraine came from its eight vertical launch cells, each containing a 3M14 caliber cruise missile. With a 1,000 pound warhead and a range of nearly 1,200 miles, these missiles were a strategic threat to Ukraine's cities and critical infrastructure. For Ukraine's defense intelligence, disabling this single ship was a crucial defensive measure to prevent eight potential long-range attacks. The operation was preceded by 96 hours of intense intelligence gathering. Ukrainian forces tracked the Boyan M corvette using a combination of surveillance tools. High-resolution images from commercial Maxar satellites provided the ship's exact location, while a Bayraktar TB2 drone loitered at 20,000 feet, offering continuous real-time video of its movements. This extended surveillance revealed the corvette's patrol schedule and, more importantly, a critical vulnerability. The warship was consistently operating in the supposedly safe Tamruk Bay without a frigate escort, a clear departure from standard Russian naval protocol for such valuable assets. This routine created the tactical opportunity Ukraine needed. 30 miles from the target, a Ukrainian special unit managed the mission. They maintained a secure, low-latency link to the drone via an encrypted Starlink satellite connection. The weapon for this mission was the UJ-26 Boba, a Ukrainian-made unmanned aerial vehicle. Constructed from composite materials and weighing just 11 pounds, the Boba was designed for stealth rather than speed. Flying at around 75 miles per hour and skimming the sea at an altitude of only 40 feet, it was built to avoid detection. On the operator's screen, the drone's thermal camera showed the target clearly. The Corvette's hot engine exhaust stood out against the cold, dark sea. By 4.42 a.m., the Boba drone was deep into its 350-mile journey. Its flight path was engineered to exploit basic principles of physics. The drone's 40-foot altitude kept it below the warship's radar horizon. Due to the Earth's curvature, a ship's radar has a limited line of sight to low-flying objects. At this altitude, the Corvette's powerful MR-352 positive radar, which could detect high-altitude targets up to 90 miles away, would be unable to see the drone until it was within 25 miles, by which point it would be too late. Controlling the drone over such a distance was a major challenge, as direct radio signals are limited by the line of sight. Ukraine addressed this with an innovative two-drone relay system. A second drone, acting as a mother relay platform, circled at an altitude of three miles. The operator's commands were sent via Starlink to this high-altitude relay drone, which then transmitted the signals down to the low-flying Boba. This system bypassed the line-of-sight problem, allowing for uninterrupted control from hundreds of miles away. Despite its vulnerability, the Bayan M Corvette was a well-defended vessel. Its primary sensor, the MR-352 positive radar, could track up to 300 targets at once. For close-range defense, it was equipped with the AK-630 M2 Duet, a weapon system with two six-barreled 30mm rotary cannons that could fire a combined 10,000 rounds per minute. Additionally, its TK-25 Electronic Warfare EW suite was designed to jam the guidance systems of incoming threats. However, all these defenses depended on the positive radar detecting a threat in the first place. The Boba's composite body gave it a radar signature smaller than a dinner plate, making it almost invisible. The ship's entire defensive network was waiting for a trigger that would never arrive. At 4.45 a.m., the first alarm was sounded, not by the ship's advanced systems, but by the operator of a Russian Orlan-10 reconnaissance drone circling nearby. 
the operator urgently radioed the warship about a small, fast-moving contact approaching on the surface. On the bridge of the Bayan M, the crew reacted instantly. The captain ordered the ship to its top speed of 25 knots and began making sharp, evasive turns. This was a standard maneuver to evade torpedoes, but it was ineffective against a threat being actively guided in real time. The Ukrainian plan was not to sink the ship with brute force, but to surgically disable its defenses. The attack was planned in two stages. The first drone carried a specialized two-pound fragmentation warhead. Its purpose was to destroy the ship's main sensor, the MR-352 positive radar. The warhead was designed to detonate just before impact, showering the delicate radar array with high-velocity shrapnel. In the final moments of its approach, the drone's onboard Palantir AI took over terminal guidance, using pattern recognition to lock onto the radar's heat signature for a precise hit. At 4.46 a.m., as the first drone closed in, a Russian officer activated the TK-25 electronic warfare suite, following standard procedure. A light on the console confirmed that jamming signals were being broadcast at full power. This was the correct tactical response, but it was aimed at the wrong threat. The Boba was controlled via a satellite link high above, making the ship's localized jamming field completely ineffective. At exactly 4.49 a.m., the first Boba drone struck its target. The fragmentation warhead worked perfectly. The focused blast of shrapnel destroyed the radar's key components. The resulting shockwave snapped the weakened mast, sending the three-ton radar assembly crashing onto the deck. In an instant, the ship was blind. With the primary radar destroyed, the AK-630 M2 cannons could no longer function in their automated mode. The gunnery officer ordered a switch to manual optical control. A gunner was now tasked with using a thermal sight to manually track a small, fast-moving object through smoke and sea mist. The complex targeting calculations, normally done by a computer, were now dependent on human reflexes under intense pressure. The frantic bursts of 30mm shells consistently missed the second drone, lagging just behind the target. The success of the first strike created a new problem. The destroyed radar produced a massive cloud of superheated gas, which overwhelmed the infrared camera of the second approaching drone. The operator's screen in Ukraine turned completely white, a situation known as thermal washout. His weapon was now temporarily blind. Aboard the corvette, the captain, realizing he was facing a coordinated drone attack, made two urgent radio calls. He ordered his gunners to continue firing while sending a high-priority message to Crimea. Scramble fighters, suspected drone mothership in the vicinity. From Belbek Air Base, two Su-30 fighters took off, starting a new countdown for the Ukrainian team. However, the Ukrainian operators had anticipated this possibility. Seeing the thermal washout, the drone operator engaged the second drone's autonomous attack mode. This was their backup plan. The drone disconnected from human control and began navigating using pre-loaded, high-resolution 3D maps of the bay. Its AI used the ship's last known position and course to calculate a new intercept path based on its internal data. The Russian captain continued his evasive zigzagging in a desperate attempt to avoid being hit, but the drone's AI was one step ahead. Its predictive targeting system analyzed the corvette's speed and rate of turn, calculating not where the ship was, but where it would be in the next 15 seconds. The ship's evasive maneuvers were simply providing more data to refine the AI's targeting solution. The Boba drone flew through the thermal cloud. Its camera feed cleared, revealing the hull of the Bayan M filling the screen. Russian sailors on the deck opened fire with their AK-74M assault rifles and a PKM machine gun. It was a final, desperate effort, but the small caliber rounds had no effect on the drone's composite body. Just 4.22 seconds after the first impact, the second Boba drone hit the hull just above the waterline. Its warhead pierced the thin steel plate, detonating inside a forward compartment. The explosion buckled bulkheads and tore a two-foot-wide hole in the ship. Seawater poured in, and the vessel immediately began to list to one side. For the crew, the fight against the drones was over. The struggle to save their ship had just begun. 
At 5.03 a.m., 15 minutes after the attack, the two Russian Su-30 fighters arrived over the bay. They were just in time to see the damaged corvette slowly making its way to the nearest port, leaving a trail of oil on the water. Their arrival only served to confirm the success of the Ukrainian operation. The final result was a major tactical and economic victory for Ukraine. Two drones, costing less than $1,000 combined, had effectively neutralized a $60 million warship. More importantly, its eight caliber cruise missiles, worth about $1 million each, were now useless. Without targeting data from the destroyed positive radar, the missiles could not be launched. This single operation had potentially saved numerous Ukrainian lives by disabling the threat before it could be used. The engagement in Tamriuk Bay demonstrated a clear lesson for modern navies. Complacency and routine can become critical vulnerabilities, easily exploited by an innovative and determined adversary.